I painted two versions of this in ArtRage 6, then I imported them into Affinity Photo and merged them together to come up with this painting. So I'm going to show you how I did that. Let's get into it. I decided uh, to have a go at this swan and uh, I've painted it in Art Rage and I'm just this is Art Rage 6 by the way and I'm using just the default oil brushes because I wanted to see what they were like because they've got these two new features now where you can um, change the depth of the um, paint I think the gloss is new as well so um, yeah they're subtly different and I wanted to see how, how they worked I'm really into this um, triadic color thing going off on the color wheel where you can pick colors that uh, make up this complementary color scheme which I, I'm I've used in every painting actually uh, since it, it, it came out in Art Rage 6 but really as well as that I wanted to um, do a painting that was concentrating on uh, light and I wanted to look at reflections of light and how the light uh, would um, is reflecting and bouncing off this swan although in the photo it looks pretty flat so I've got a little bit of work to make it look a little bit more um, exciting I think but on top of that when I got to the end I decided that um, I didn't like the finished painting uh, basically there was uh, it looked a bit clumsy there was lots of brush strokes in it and I wanted to soften them off so I used the a palette knife to soften them, them off so then I'd got two versions of the painting one with the brush marks in it and um, I'd exported that and looked at it on a larger screen then decided I needed to soften it so I softened that uh, and, and exported another picture or another painting and which was blended and much more to my taste but I'd overdone it I'd, I'd put too much blending in so if you stay to the, uh, the end of the video you'll see how I use uh, affinity uh, photo to bring the two paintings together create a um, um a masked layer of one of the paintings I, I superimposed one on top of the other and painted out to make a, a a new painting a brand new painting of the two picking out the best bits of each one uh, so something i've never ever done before so what turned out to be an exercise in uh, light and color turned into exploring new techniques as well so i will get into that uh, a little bit later on so uh, basically the old painting is done on one layer um, the signature and everything I I didn't create any layers at all for this I've, I'm really of the opinion that if you're working with thick paint you want to work on as few layers as possible uh, so you can take advantage of those colors merging together and if you need to um, get a nice clean painterly line uh, or a, a sharp line of color just select the insta dry option from the uh, pre from the settings of the brush and then you will be able to just paint over as almost as if you're on a new layer and then you can once you've got that in you can switch it off again and merge the colors so basically you can see i started off with like this blue color and then I just used colors from the uh, triad uh, of the three complementary colors and um, just use them all the time. Every now and again, I selected a color off of the uh, painting, but I found if I did that, it would adjust the triad slightly and we'd go more, the yellow color would go more into the green and the purple would go more to the red. So, uh, I kept using the color wheel to select the colors rather than off the canvas, which I do a lot uh, in other paintings. So the light then, I wanted to sort of put his head in shadow and the neck in shadow. So that was kind of 
um, juxtaposed, I guess, against the the really bright sky, and then the um, underside of the swan. I wanted to be a, a reflection of the really bright gra grass that I've used. I went in with a really sort of over the top, vibrant, bright coloured grass which um, I really like straight away. And I wanted that reflecting on the underside of the swan and the shadows not to appear as dark as the um, neck. And then the, uh, the other important thing is the background where I've got this sort of dark green blue color to um, throw the um, swan, really make the swan be pushed forward and stand out so we've got these two sort of contrasting areas one with the neck against the light sky in the head and the body against the sort of distant um bushes i didn't bother painting in the narrow boat and all of that detail that just wasn't relevant to this painting and the brushes i did fiddle about with the settings quite a bit and I was using that depth uh, um, option is really cool because you can just sort of slide that up and get a much sort of thicker type paint where you can see the, the brush strokes. So you've got a lot of flexibility. If you don't ever touch the, um, the custom brushes, you've got so much more flexibility now in um, the default brushes just by uh, playing around with the settings of those brushes. You can see here that I've got these sort of um, brush strokes on the body of the swan and they're quite uh, prominent. They, they stand out and they obviously are these sort of um, thick brush strokes. And that is essentially going to make up the um, first painting, as it were, the finished painting. And while I, when I was working on my 16-inch Cintiq, it looked great. It looked really nice. And I thought, yeah, that's uh, looking good. But when I put it on the bigger screen, it kind of looked like it had been drawn on a small scale and enlarged. And it just did not look right at all. The brush strokes just looked way, way too big. So... Uh, although I, I don't know what you're viewing it on, if you're viewing it on a um, a tablet or a, a mobile device, a phone or something, I'm sure it'll look okay. But if you're looking at it on a huge TV screen, you'll probably be able to understand where I'm coming from, that you've got these sort of um, thick brush strokes that are just quite amateurish, really. They, they didn't look right. So how did I... Uh, get over it i decided that i was going to use the um a, a blending knife and i just used the um oh, i can't remember which one it was the hard out smudge that's it i used the hard out smudge blending tool to uh, soften that and i started off fairly um discreetly and, and you can see there i'm sort of softening off edges and uh, blending stuff together and then i thought i want a more of an abstract thing let's really go so the painting is all about the light and not so much uh, this one and i started to get a bit more adventurous and um sort of losing edges of the neck and the head and the the legs almost disappear you'll see that in a minute you see they're sort of getting um blended away and I really liked it. So I exported that version. But I thought, hmm, maybe I painted a few other little bits back in as well before I exported it um, or I exported it again. And I thought, you know what? These bits about the first one I like. So you, you'll see here that I've now opened up Affinity Photo and I've got the two versions, one with... Uh, the brush strokes in on one without so what i do is i copy the original layer and paste it on top of the um second painting 
and you'll see in the layer stack, I've already done it once as an experiment. So what I do, I add a layer mask, I choose a paintbrush, and then you can see I'm just sort of softening off, softening off the edges and um, blending those colors together, but leaving areas as it were. So I've now got um, a combination of the two paintings, which I really like. Uh, and that's a new technique I've never tried before where I bring the, the two photos into a affinity photo and merge the two paintings together to get a third painting. So I hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you have a big thumbs up would be appreciated. That helps me out a lot. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing because I have lots of videos all about art rage and procreate and just about any painting app you can imagine so hopefully i'll see you all in the next one bye